Hello, everyone. I hope that most of you were eligible to vote last year because my topic is about Prop 10, which was um, rent control uh, that would have allowed uh, local municipalities and cities to um, implement rent control measures within their jurisdiction. And what rent control is, it's a ceiling that limits the increase of rent. And um, it's usually set much lower than the market uh, rate housing. And the reason that it's such a contested issue is because um, affordable housing is kind of at a crisis point in California, especially, because um, uh, there's a lack of affordable housing. So the US Department of Housing and Urban Development defines urban, uh, sorry, defines affordable housing as uh, a unit that a household can obtain for 30% or less of the median income of the area. And this varies from city to city because um, obviously the average income in every city is different. And so um, my proposition is that rent control measures have a negative effect on um, the stock of affordable housing. And so my first supporting claim is that landlords will disinvest in the maintenance of rent controlled properties. And my second claim is that uh, rent controlled units are subject to price increases that tenants leave when tenants leave or are evicted. And so the first uh, claim that landlords will disinvest in maintenance for their rent controlled properties is based on the fact that um, maintenance on these properties is paid through increases in rent. So if they don't have the resources to pay for those um, maintenance projects, then they're gonna they're gonna hold off. And investors will find ways um, to make up for the loss of in profits through spending less on operating costs. Okay. Um, Otter, uh, Palmer, and Pathak, who are scholars from MIT, write in the journal of Political Economy in 2004 about Cambridge, Massachusetts uh, rent control measure. And because Cambridge's rent control board was unlikely to grant rent increases following property improvements, it was likely perceived that rent control muted owners' incentives to maintain and improve controlled properties. And so what this ultimately leads to is that poor maintenance has higher health and safety issues. And in uh, 2007, David Sims wrote in the Journal of Urban Economics that chronic maintenance problems such as holes in walls or floors chipped and peeling paint and loose railings were more prevalent in controlled than in uncontrolled units during the rent control era and that this differential fell substantially when they got rid of rent control. And so this um, estimate demonstrates that ending rent control leads to a significant reduction in these maintenance problems and uh, if unit is almost 6% more, uh, sorry, less likely to experience such problems once its zone is decontrolled. And this means that the benefits of lower rents comes with the cost of uh, quality deterioration. And then my second point is that rent controlled units are subject to price increases when tenants leave or are evicted. And uh, tenants can leave whenever, like based off of a bunch of different aspects, like they can be bought out or they can be evicted forcefully. And landlords can choose to make upgrades to the unit that will affect the next tenant. So Arnott and Sevyakova um, write in the Journal of Regional Science and Urban Economics in 2014 that signing of a unit's lease, which specifies the starting rent, determines the discounted rent over tenancy. And so the other incentive that um, Landlords have is to increase the quality of the unit once the renter is out of the unit. And so the um, so this happens at the end of the tenancy, and which will increase the rental revenue uh, the landlord receives on subsequent tenancies, and encourages maintenance at the end of the tenancy. And then finally, last landlords can choose to renovate the unit or re and resell for a higher profit. And Diamond, McQuaid, and Keon um, from Stanford University in 2017 wrote that they found that landlords whose properties were exogenously covered by rent control reduced their supply of available 
rental housing by 15% by either converting condos to selling, um, sorry, converting to condos or um, selling to owner-occupied or redeveloped buildings. So this led to a citywide rent increase of 5.1%. And so the substitution toward owner-occupied and high-end new construction rentals caters to, high, um, to higher income individuals. And in these cases, uh, future tenants miss out on the opportunity for um, getting the unit while it's still affordable. And that um, those two supporting claims of landlords disinvesting in the maintenance of the uh, rent-controlled properties, and then rent-controlled properties uh, units are subject to price increases um, when tenants leave or are evicted. And that's my proposition was Rent control measures have negative effect on the stock of affordable housing. See that you're anxious to get them out of your hands. Okay, Isaac, uh, the proposition's clearly identified at the beginning of the speech. There's a good preview of your secondary points. Uh, the second of your supporting points is awkwardly phrased, and I think that uh, ultimately there's a, a clearer and more direct argument that you want to be making there, but we'll get to that in just a second. So you did have a good preview there. The, as you get to the individual points in the body of the speech, you signpost them pretty clearly. On your first point, you immediately give us some... Uh, uh, testimony data from uh, researchers who've evaluated this. They've got an example that they're using of Cambridge's restrictions. Um, then there's some statistical information about uh, uh, people and the potential problems that they're going to run into once we remove rent control. I thought that was pretty effective. Um, the health and safety violations are a little generic. It's, it's almost like there's a separate argument there. Uh, it doesn't really get uh, developed and there's no demonstration that this problem is uh, is substantial just that uh, people might have to live with some crappier apartments I guess uh, without necessarily a demonstration that there's any consequence to having to live with a hole in the wall or chipped and peeling paint um, you know for some people that makes it quite appealing uh, okay I just thought I'd try uh, your second point though I think ultimately suggests that there's going to be less affordable housing as a consequence of this. That's really what your argument is. You're, the way you've got it phrased is, well, price increases can exist when this other thing happens. I'm going, okay, Why? that just sounds like it's a piece of information, but your argument is in the long run that it's going to result in price increases, which are gonna drive people out of the marketplace. Either the landlords are going to sell uh, the properties or they're going to reprice them by upgrading them so much that it'll be hard for people to afford. So your real argument here isn't just that uh, uh, you know that prices are going to go up but it's, the inference is that the increase in prices is going to result in a declining availability of housing. It's actually going to tighten the housing market instead of expanding the housing market. So I, you know, so it's a it's a counterproductive thing, and I think that would be a clearer claim for you to present. Uh, you do a pretty good job, like I said, citing your evidence. Uh, there's always a source <coughs> citation for the uh, testimony and the statistics that you present. I think that works pretty well, um, and it's 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 delivered fine. All right, thank you.